Are you feeling overwhelmed about getting Part 107 certified to fly drones commercially? It's actually super easy, and we're going to show you how in this video, so stay tuned. Howdy YouTube, Austin Aronofsky here from K-Star Media, and today we're here to give you five tips on how to pass your Part 107 commercial drone flying test. So here we go. So tip number five today is going to be to take the trust recreational test. Uh, you may have already done this if you're in the process of getting to the Part 107 commercial testing license, um, but uh, if you haven't, it is a great resource, and even if you have, you should go back and do it again because uh, questions that are in the trust test are actually questions that you will see in the Part 107. The first thing that we'll be uh, looking at is the uh, recreational UAS safety test, also known as the trust, and you can find more information about that here on the FAA's website. Uh, just did a simple Google search for a trust recreational license and if you scroll down here uh, one of the things is you got to go to one of these uh, approved testing uh, websites I went and did this one here drone trust I uh, went to their website and all you got to do is just input your name your email address and then it starts a small course that goes over goes over some information that's uh, very useful uh, it is recovered in part 107, just on a more kind of high level. Uh, so uh, you, doing this will help you in the part 107, as well as kind of get you acclimated to flying drones and some of the regulations that you need to follow while doing so. All right, tip number four today is to go out and fly your drone. A uh, great way to get used to how the drone flies, how to work in the airspace and fly your drone around will give you a better understanding when you go in and start learning some of these things that you'll need to know when you go in for your Part 107 license test. Uh, so getting comfortable and just understanding how the drone works is just a great way to get yourself introduced and get started when you're looking to get that Part 107 license. Okay. Tip number three today is going to be regulations in airspace. Uh, I just got my Part 107 license about two, three weeks ago and some of the questions that were on there, uh, or rather the majority of the questions on there were on the regulations, the, like laws and things regarding how to use drones in airspace, as well as how to navigate airspace in total. So focusing on those things when you do go to study for your Part 107 test is going to be uh, monumental to really getting you to pass that test. So focus on those things and we should give you some resources and things to look at uh, in the next section here. So tip number two today is going to be applications that you can find on your phone or computer. The Sky Vector shows a lot about airspace and stuff that you will see on your Part 107 test. Uh, that is a website that allows you to see the different uh, uh, essentially air map of wherever you want to see. Uh, it does have all the information from the local airports and uh, if I can get it to cooperate here. Um, zooming in, let's say on Detroit Metro Airport, uh, it does cover and shows all of the pertinent information to the airspace that uh, is around the airport. You can see a lot of the other stuff that's covered here. And a lot of this stuff is stuff that you'll learn on part 107, such as this being Class B airspace here in the blue. There is a really cool application by 3D Airspace that uh, hooks to Google Map Pro that allows you to 3D model airspace. And if you download that, install Google Earth, uh, it'll install Google Earth Pro. And then uh, something that's really cool to go along with Google Earth Pro, let me open that up real quick. And then I'll show you guys this. Um, and this here is uh, a cool web page that was uh, created and is shared by uh, 3dairspace.org in the UK. And they went through and made uh, airspace maps of all the different countries. Uh, you can see some of them aren't available, but you can see for the United States, Canada, um, uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, and so a lot of those are available. 
you can go here and click. I'm going to click on United States because that's where I am. You can see it downloads this KMZ file, which is for Google Earth. So let me do that. <clears throat> and then uh, once you go into Google Earth and open that, you go over here to file and open and then open this. When you do that, it adds this uh, places folder in United States.SUA. And just to kind of reiterate on how airspace works, I'm going to zoom back into Detroit Airport that we were just looking at, Class B airspace. And the, the really cool, neat thing about this application is that if you zoom in and angle yourself towards the ground, you can see that the shelves of the airspace, which you'll learn about in Part 107, are actually... Um, here in 3D space, so you can see exactly how shelves work in airspace and how they actually aren't touching the ground and uh, just kind of gives a really neat visualization. So uh, just a really cool application and something to use to get more familiar with how airspaces work. And so uh, just something cool to check out. It also obviously does Class C and Class D airspace, and you can look at those as well on here. And then we have the Before You Fly app, which is actually um, given out by the FAA, the Federal uh, Aviation Administration. And uh, that just helps to give you uh, an idea of uh, your airspace around you and if there is anything going on and things you have to be aware of. Uh, FAA's Before You Fly app, uh, we'll share a little bit about that. Uh, it is just a uh, application that allows you to go and uh, get LANT uh, authorization, so just uh, ATC authorization to fly your drone at low altitudes, and it's just a handy app to look at before going and flying. Lastly, we have AirMap, which is just a cool application that allows you to look at uh, different airspace features and uh, how things are around you. It is AirMap. Uh, this is another really cool app that just shares more information about airspace and makes it easy to uh, learn about if you are flying, um, if you're flying your drone uh, legally and making sure you're in proper airspace while you're doing so. Uh, some other cool tips that I can give you if we're rolling some stuff right now is to look at your current weather conditions, looking at wind, um, the cloud cover, um, looking at your local METARs for your uh, uh, airports, which you can see on Sky Vector, which is actually a pretty cool feature of that. Helps you to understand flying and what you will see on your Part 107 exam in some capacity. So bonus tips today are going to be the FAA website, Drone Zone website, and IACRA websites. The FAA is Drone Zone where you have to go to register your drone if it weighs more than 0.55 pounds and of course if it's less than 55 pounds uh, this is actually should be 0.55 pounds here um, here you have to go and register your drone and that just gives you registration numbers so it can be tracked if something were to happen or flies into someone's house or into a business um, so if you are a trust recreational flyer, you have to register under here, and if you are part 107, you register here. Uh, when I started, I went and I registered under trust, and then after I got my part 107, I went and registered again. It does cost $5 to register your drone, both under trust and under 107, so if you wanted to wait, you could do this, but then you wouldn't be flying legally uh, uh, if your drone was over 0.55 pounds. So. It is $5, so it's not that expensive and is pretty easy to do. It takes maybe a couple minutes to get done. The other one is the IACRA website. So this one is uh, something you should get familiar with. This is how you go and get an FTN or an FAA tracking number. Uh, you need the FAA tracking number in order to sign up and get your UAG test uh, submitted to uh, the FAA. So you will need to get familiar with this, sign up here in order to get that number, and then you can go ahead and uh, sign up for the uh, UAG Part 107 exam. Okay, and the tip number one is going to be to go out and find online resources. We're going to show you some resources that I used from Udemy, and then also uh, just going to let you know that it was pretty cheap, about 30 bucks for both of them. I got them on one of those crazy Udemy sales that they have running almost every other week. They were uh, four and five hours 
we'll show you those. Uh, I spent about 15 hours in total watching both of those videos, watched one of them twice just to refresh myself after uh, watching them for three weeks, went and took my test and passed with an 83. Uh, this one is the FAA Part 107 exam prep, and it comes with some PDF study materials from the pilot handbook and uh, some questions to go through. Uh, I took both of these. Uh, uh, this one was five hours, this one was four hours, and I actually watched this one twice, and that was a great resource, had a lot of really good information, and just going through this and then spending a little extra time, approximately five hours watching YouTube videos and some other supplemental resources just to get more familiar with some of the terms. And then looking through stuff such as uh, Sky Vector and that Google map really just covered everything I needed to know. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. If you didn't want to go the route of paying for resources such as these, uh, there is obviously uh, other written resources and free resources on YouTube. You just have to go out there and find them. The test does cost $175 if you're in the States. So uh, keep that in mind when you're thinking about resources and what you may want to purchase. So by spending 30 bucks on these courses that I got online and then on the test, it was about $200 and that's not too bad for getting uh, certified. So uh, just keep that in mind. You got tip number five, look at the trust test take the trust test again if you already have number four go out and fly your drone nothing's better than practice we got number three to focus on regulations and airspace because those are integral to the part 107 drone license information number two look at some of those apps and programs they give a great visual representation of what you'll need for your license and a bonus tip, go out and look at the, the websites that we provided for you, some great supplemental information. And the number one tip, go out and find some resources online, either online free resources or go and look at those courses on Udemy that we're going to show you. Thanks everybody for watching from KSTAR Media. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, we'll put our drone unboxing video over here on the screen. You should check that out. It's pretty cool. and. Uh, obviously is what you'll need to fly if you're going for your 107 license. Uh, just want to let you know, like, subscribe this video. We're going to have some more content out about what we're doing with our drone and uh, some tips and tricks and other things we've learned about it. Uh, comment with any questions you have about the 107 license and we'll try to uh, give you some information back. And then if anyone else in the community has some information about passing that 107 drone test, uh, please leave a comment below. I'm from KSTAR Media. Happy shooting.